Federal Executive Council approves 2022 appropriation bill for presentation to the National Assembly. Central Bank of Nigeria says Nigeria's payment system attracts $500 million investment in five years. Google to invest $1 billion to lift Africa internet access. Plus, Hong Kong Hang Seng jumps more than 2%. Details of this and more on Business Express on the network service of the NTA. And we are reaching you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Benny Adams, your guide. Good to have you join us on business at this time and we start with the chairing news that the Federal Executive Council has approved the 2022 appropriation bill of 16.39 trillion naira for presentation to the National Assembly. Also approved are the changes made on the 2022 to 2024 medium-term expenditure framework to formally accommodate provisions of the Petroleum Industry Act. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, announced this while briefing journalists after the Council's meeting. Assumptions and targets that we submitted to Council and Council noted uh, and approved is that we'll be pricing oil at $57 per barrel, that there'll be an oil production of 1.88 million barrels per day, the exchange rate will be 410 naira, 15 kobo to one US dollar, and that the total oil revenue will be 315 trillion naira, while total non-oil revenue will be 2.13 uh, 2 trillion. Federal government independent revenue will be 1.82 trillion. Total federal government revenue will be 10.13 trillion for the 2022 budget period. Similarly, the 2022 20 to 2024 20, uh, medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper previously passed by the National Assembly did not accommodate fiscal provisions of the Petroleum Industry Act. This is coming from the executive arm of government, which presented a revised version to the legislators less than 24 hours. It was presented. The Senate has passed the revised 2022 20, to 2024 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. Formally present the 2022 appropriation bill to the joint session of the National Assembly. Please accept the single Senate President the assurances of my highest regards as I look forward. Well, Shed more light on the economic benefits of the revised MTEF and the figures of the 2022 budget to be presented to the Joint National Assembly is an economist, Emeka Okengu. Emeka will join Emeka after this short break.
Well, I have with me in the studio Dr. Emeka Okengu, a development economist. And together we will be talking of uh, the proposed 2022 budget that is going to be presented any moment from now by Mr. President to the National Assembly and also the approval of the MTEP 2022 to 2024. So you're welcome to business. Pleasure Express. to be here, Benny. Good to see you again. Well, it's been a while. Yeah. Well, what do you make of the MTEF and the revised rates? Well, it's not any introduction. Uh, MTEF uh, emanates from what you call the fiscal strategy paper, okay, which now guides what's the MTEF. It's a review, uh, is, is what you call the uh, medium term expenditure framework, okay, that now reviews yeah, in a mid term on a three year basis what, what it is you want to do, how it is you've done it, and then, you know, f set, set the fiscal regimes going forward. Okay, especially how you now want to conduct uh, the business of your national budget. So it's, uh, it's a statutory requirement. Uh, in, in the past, it hadn't been followed, but uh, it's good that uh, this government has uh, judiciously uh, forward, followed it, at least in the past two, three years, presented so that everybody has an, an idea of what to expect. I mean, what it just simply does is it's a pathway, a pathfinder, or some kind of uh, uh, opening to what to expect you know, in a given budgetary, you know, uh, documentation. Which has also helped for us to have a consistent calendar of, of the budget and it also helps implementation. Well, I think, I think what has helped is, is, is the commitment of the executive, not necessarily the, 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 the MTF, okay? Uh, but, uh, but presenting it when it has, now would also help the Senate or the National Assembly in having an idea of what to expect. So, I mean, you're not jumping a document on them Okay, they have approved it, and then when in our tallies, okay, with what it is you could be presenting in your budget, because a lot of the figures that the president is going to be announcing today or laying at the table of uh, the House of uh, the National Assembly today would have been things, you know, already captured uh, in the MTEF. Okay, sir, the coronavirus uh, pandemic came with its effects, uh, which has actually affected businesses and governments globally, not yeah. just a Nigerian yeah. situation. Yeah. And in such situations, to recover as quickly as we should, yeah. which we are trying, yeah. means more money into the system. And we've had a monetary and fiscal policies by the ECB and mm. been consistent over this period yeah. to support this particular growth. Mm. Now the figures that mm. are coming up, the figures we're expecting, mm. or the figures we have mm. now for mm. the 2022 budget, the proposed yeah. budget, yeah. it's an increase from yeah. the previous one, which goes to say we need more money. But this also comes with borrowing. Mm. Are we borrowing too much? Are we borrowing? Is well, the borrowing okay? Well, again, let, let's let's establish you know a given. Uh, the budget is not a funding program. Okay, the budget is what it is—a financial plan that you have cashed in figures. And uh, your funding program now determines, or is now determined by your revenue. Okay, so uh, what the budget simply does is to be able to open up you know, the windows to say, okay, this is what we're expecting, this is what we want to do. We're expecting in a revenue projection of 10 trillion and then probably a borrowing of about five to something trillion, uh, five to six trillion. Okay, but then if, if government earns more than 10 trillion, it would not be needing to borrow as much as six trillion. This is why what you're looking at is a financial plan. But if it doesn't end up to 10 trillion, which is a possibility, in fact, the possibility of not earning that 10 trillion is on the higher side than earning than over, 10, over 10 trillion. Okay. And if you look at the MTF paper, uh, it, it focused, I mean, from the first line of that MTF paper, it kept talking about the effects of the coronavirus and what it is is done. Which is clear. Uh, which is very clear. Uh, but for me, I think uh, I wouldn't want us to dwell on how much we're borrowing, are we over borrowing, if we, okay, but the question, each time people bring this argument, the question I ask is, if we don't borrow, what else do we, can we do? Okay, I mean, this is where I would rather focus. And I keep saying to them, yes, there are some other things we can, we can also do. We now need to actually now begin to practicalize what is called thinking out of the box. Okay, we have a lot of assets that are lying down there under AMCON that can be converted you Some know, of these assets were, were listed. We have them in different stages, those in the public glare. And I think the process have begun. That, that's what I'm saying, that, that, that we need to be very innovative <coughs> about it. Okay, yes. it's one thing. You, you must be able to do some kind of technical audit that gives you 
a proper understanding of what went wrong. And he found out that a lot of these assets, I mean, it wasn't as if they were in high yield assets. They were just mismanaged. A lot of the times, it was just a question of wrong management or corruption or maladministration or something. So if we're able to now know that it's not, and again, each time we talk about this national budget, uh, everybody seems to think that we're talking about 16 trillion for the whole of Nigeria. That's also not very correct. <laughs> okay? Uh, we are talking about 16 trillion for the federal government of Nigeria. The Remember that subnationals have a role to the, play. No, no. The, the subnationals have their own budgets. Yes. So that any day you want us to discuss the Nigerian budget, okay, because we are talking about the national budget. If you want us to discuss the Nigerian budget, then we must find a way of aggregating the budgets of the subnationals and the budget of a national for us to be able to have to this have figure. A collective now, summed that, up that's budget one. For the Two, nation. you also mentioned that we are going to be having more money. Now, if you just oppose 16 trillion against the official exchange or not official exchange, now because I live in the official exchange at about 4.10, yeah. but you find out that it's difficult, you know, so for that to apply. That. Really, okay? So if you if you if you if you if you use the popular parlance, you know, what the streets is is trading at, okay, which is where the real market is, you know, and you just oppose that figure against 16 trillion, you might find out that actually the three trillion might be less in value than the 13 trillion we had in the last budget. Okay, because I mean, we're part of this global economy and we haven't gotten to that point where we've been able to strengthen our Naira to a point where it can now begin to actually sit proudly, you know, at the table of the Committee of Nations. And I'm sure you're going to bring in this, okay, everybody says it's productivity. Now, this is where the catch-22 comes. This is where the chicken and egg situation now arises. Now, some in, in, in all of this analysis, mm -hmm. what are your expectations by the time this uh, paper or this budget is laid at the National Assembly? My, my, spe my, my, my expectations is that I want us to be a little bit more artistic and innovative in implementing the budget. And for once, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that we should not focus on the national budget. That's it. That's the argument I'm trying to present. Yeah. We should all come together <coughs> now, okay? Because if you look at agriculture that has uh, just 98 billion, from the national budget, okay? And everybody says that agriculture is a pathway out of this. And you're getting INEC to have a hundred billion. All right, yes, the electoral process is important, very important for us to be able to sustain our democratic, mm -hmm. you know, uh, regimes or uh, uh, structures. But, 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 but what is also as important is that, you know, it, it's, it's no longer, we must be able to now separate uh, what you call social infrastructure from critical infrastructure. And then make certain that we now focus on that social infrastructure, which is why anytime you get on a program, they, they, they say, but we're not feeling this effect. Okay, we're growing at 5%, uh, but are the people in the street, how, how are they feeling it? Now, the only reasons why they're not feeling it is because people are going to bed hungry. Hear me? That is the most important test, okay, of good living, food. Something okay, that elementary. I want to talk about these areas of budget we should be looking out to. There's mm -hmm. this World Bank uh, report uh, that titled Steering Tertiary Education uh, Towards Resilient Systems That Deliver for All, where 74% global growth of youth population aged between 18 and 23 will be majorly in Nigeria mm -hmm. and nine other countries mm -hmm. from uh, 2015 to 2035. What are your expectations? How can we? engage this age you, to ensure you, you don't become a, a liability. You've just gotten it. Everybody has a television station in Nigeria. Everyone who has a phone has a channel. And you can actually earn a lot of money, you know, from just doing this YouTube, uh, depend, depend on your fellowship. So it's no longer about this formal education. That's why I keep using the word that we need to be innovative. Sure. We need to be more creative to be able to engage this youth. And a lot of the things you're doing now, fashion, marketing, trading, everything is online. Okay, even the e-Nara and e-wallets and all that. So it's, it's about us looking at our education now, okay, and then be able to actually now uh, decipher what we need to be able to, 
you know, capture this body in youth? Is it this administrative education we get and you go to a university, Which get a BSc? Yes, and, and, and then, and then you start the chasing thing. jobs all over the place, or is this something that can actually now, you know, even as a student, these days, they are, you don't need to be in a classroom to be able to get education. A lot of things are happening online. Okay, now, so we need to start looking at such infrastructure to now make certain because. I mean, there's this uh, friend of mine who wants to train the, uh, the PA in some online uh, thing. And I, I was listening to that conversation in my office yesterday. And then he was telling the boss that I would, I would love, I would have, I would have loved to do this online, but some of the times I get online, I get cut off, I don't have data, it's too expensive, the network is not clear, and all that, and all that. 5G is coming on board soon. Yes. Well, it, it doesn't have to be a 5G thing. The 4G yeah. is adequate. Okay, but I think what's happening is that the infrastructure is far and in between. Lagging. Okay, so if you're able to place these things and then somehow begin to even have places where you can get free data, okay, where this child does not need to look for somebody to give him that. I mean, mm -hmm. that happens all over the place you go to. You go most shopping malls abroad. Even in this environment, you have free Wi-Fi. Exactly. So if you have a free Wi-Fi here and you had some other, uh, this is not an environment anybody can assess. Not even your popular guest. I mean, if your gate, if your name is not on that gate, you're not going to come in here. So if we have places like that, Benny, <coughs> where you, it, it, the, the whole idea is that, yes, uh, the, the budget shouldn't be a concentration now. It, it, it's a, for me, it's, it's a ritual, okay? It's something that has to happen for government business to continue. Let's, let's go beyond. Yes, let's, let's get out of the box and then begin to now think about how inclusive this, our expending this budget can become so that the man in the streets, first, as I talked about this social infrastructure, the moment we can be able to, and it does not have to be true Ministry of Agriculture. I keep telling you this. Okay, food production is necessarily a technology-based thing. It's not an agri, it's not a land-based thing. I mean, you don't need land to produce food now. What you need, that. what you need to produce food is technology. The, the land is, is is a primary element of it. No, the land is no longer primary. It's now. no longer primary. No, the land is the <laughs> land is actually very secondary. I mean, you're having virtual farms, okay, that are going 60, 70 floors. And I'm not talking about fat in, de in developed in developed countries. I'm talking about countries like Singapore, like Malaysia, like South Korea, okay. They are and they are, they are taking over the world. So what we need to do, you know, to get this right, and, and for me, let me also say this, it's when you say don't borrow, I mean, you can talk about our GDP being, our borrowing being 23% of our GDP, and then, yes, the minister compared us to one or two other countries. Other countries, okay. where, where, to, to say we're actually borrowing less. Well, it's... But we need to even borrow for, for no, more infrastructure. No, again, we must borrow. Hear me. We must borrow or make the money. It's like in academics, they say you either publish or you perish. But how does it impact on the man who does not understand the language of this GDP? This leads me to my last question before I let you go. Yeah. For the remaining of the year, where should we be putting our money to? Food production. Food production. Not agriculture. But food production. Yes. The using infrastructure. Te using technology. The infrastructure for food production. The moment people can get food burning, the moment you can send... 5,000 to your mom and she stocks up, 5,000 to your wife and she stocks up, 5,000 to your sister out of your 50,000 naira salary, we are good to go. Until we get there, whatever it is we'll be speaking will be grammar. Wow. On that final note, we say thank you so very much, Dr. Okengu, for sharing your thoughts Pleasure. with us. Food Pleasure. production is Food production. the way Food production. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, the World Trade Organization, WTO, says global trade in goods is expected to grow by 10.8% in 2021 and 4.7% in 2022. The global trade rose 22% year on year in the second quarter of 2021, but the growth rate is expected to decline to 6.6% .6 in the fourth quarter. The WTO also projected that global gross domestic product will increase by 5.3% in 2021 and 4.1% in 2022. Economists now estimate that the volume of world merchandise trade will increase by 10.8% in 2021 and then by 4.7% in 2022. Quarterly growth should slow in the second half of this year as the volume of trade approaches its pre-pandemic trend. 
While it is not captured by this forecast, trade in commercial services remains well below its pre-pandemic level. The trade recovery is strong but unequal, mirroring the K-shaped recovery in global economic output. Some regions, those with access to vaccines and sufficient fiscal space, are recovering strongly, while poorer regions with mostly unvaccinated populations are lagging behind. Google has announced that it would invest $1 billion in boosting Africa's internet access and startup scene as the tech giant eyes a youthful market increasingly armed with smartphones spread over five years. The investment includes funding for Google's Equino Subsea Cable, a major private infrastructure project aimed at ramping up Africa's high-speed connections. Google says the project will lead to a 21% drop in internet prices, as well as a five-fold increase in connection speed in Nigeria and almost triple in South Africa. Next is our Surviving COVID-19 series as put together by Olainka Ojo. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Knowing the condition of Nigeria, there is no job outside, so I'm very, very happy doing my tailoring job because the profits part, it's, it's, it's encouraging and there is there is nothing like being your self um, boss, being self employed. No, I've never regretted it for once. I'm very, very happy doing the job. I'm very, 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 very happy and excited doing the job. No matter. Challenge, like this place I am is not mine. And um, truly, um, there are a lot of challenges when it comes to some, there are some machines that I'm supposed, there are some th things that I'm supposed to put in place. I didn't been the place is mine, is, there are some things I used, I need to put in place. So one of my major challenge is getting a shop and then getting some other machine like this um, um, weaving machine here. Yeah, so all those things like that. So they are my major challenges. Wow, I'll be very, very happy. And if I, my, 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 <laughs> my ambitions and my, what I'm actually looking at will be fulfilled because I'll get a shop of my own and I'll be able to, I'll be able to create employment for other people. Yes, because I would have to bring in some other people to work alongside with me. And then that's a means of employment for other people. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Shares in Asia Pacific rose in Thursday trade with Hong Kong stocks leading gains. Global sentiment turned positive after the benchmark U.S. 10-year Treasury yield withdrew from more than three months highs on Wednesday and U.S. stocks staged a comeback from their lows. U.S. stock futures edged higher Thursday after Dow Jones Industrial Average reclaimed a 459-point loss. Dow Jones Industrial Average futures rose 181 points. S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 futures also in positive territory. European stocks rebounded on Thursday, continuing a week that has seen a wild swings in global market sentiment and trading. The high open for Europe on Thursday continues a trend of wild trading swings already seen in October. Shares in Asia Pacific rose in Thursday trade with Hong Kong stocks leading gains. The Hang Seng Index in Hong Kong jumped 2.41 percent. The Nikkei 225 in Japan rose 0.93 percent and the Shanghai Composite also topped 0.9 percent at 3,568.17. For Africa, Namibia's overall index and South Africa's JSC Africa Top 40 resumed Thursday straight on a positive note, while other stocks are still maintaining previous figures. Boss said the Able Business Express. 
This is where we end this edition of Business Express. We value your feedback, so keep the comments, observations, and suggestions coming. Be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube or NTA's channel. Business Express returns Friday at 3 p.m. I am Benny Adams saying keep thinking and doing business.